Welcome back to another episode of Wild Aussie Adventures. In this episode, Greenie and I go searching for my favourite animal, the saltwater crocodile. Up here in the NT, most water systems are home to salties. However, having a monsoonal climate, the Northern Territory receives excessive amounts of rainfall every year during the wet season, sometimes receiving up to 1,900 mils. Fortunately, with such high rainfall, there are many freshwater pools that are formed high up in the escarpments, which are croc-free, just like this one. As Greeny and I were exploring the Northern Territory straight after the wet season, there was still a lot of water around, which meant we were able to get deep into the wetlands and explore areas that would normally be inaccessible as it dries up later on in the year. With the propeller up, we navigated our way through some questionable but amazing watercourses, which paid off. We were lucky enough to see a bunch of wildlife like this stunning Mertens water monitor. This poor fella didn't know whether to be bothered by us or that fly that kept pestering him. He kept an eye on us as we drifted past, knowing full well that if he had enough of our presence, with a simple lunge, he would disappear into that water. Merton's water monitors have a compressed tail, which is an adaptation that has made them one of the most efficient hunters in the ecosystem. The compressed tail allows them to swim through the water with ease and speed, predominantly eating fish and freshwater crays, and sometimes your juvenile crocodile, these varanids will eat and feast on amphibians. This unfortunately led to a huge population decline when the first wave of cane toads went through the NT. Thankfully, their numbers are back on the rise and these amazing lizards were a common sight for us while we were exploring the wetlands and the water sources of the Northern Territory. With the Northern Territory being home to just over 400 bird species, the diversity in the wetlands was spectacular. This white-bellied seagull had the best perch in the house. Often situating themselves high above the water, they use their keen eyesight to spot fish that are unaware they are being watched, and with their powerful wings and sharp talons, these birds have been known to pluck some seriously large fish from the surface of the water. Blackneck stork takes a bit of a different approach to the white-bellied seagull when it comes to hunting. They prefer to be in the water and ready to strike with their large and powerful bill. This female felt quite comfortable with us around her and continued to preen her feathers and to stalk fish. We actually know this is a female bird because they are what's known as a sexual dimorphic species, meaning there is a way to tell between a male and a female due to different characteristics. The female black neck stork has a yellow eye, whereas a male has a dark brown eye.
have a go at this big fella. This adult male saltwater crocodile was by far one of the largest crocs we saw during the trip. We went out many days and many nights and we saw a lot of crocodiles, but this guy was a particular standout. Living in a freshwater billabong, he was surrounded by feral pigs and big water buffalo. And no doubt, this guy was definitely eating a lot of those larger food sources. On average, saltwater crocodiles have around 66 teeth. Now, they replace these teeth throughout most of their life. They're not the sharpest teeth in the world. However, they are delivered with a whopping 3,700 pounds per square inch bite force. It's fantastic to see such large saltwater crocodiles back in the environment. In the 1950s and 60s, saltwater crocodiles were almost hunted to extinction, and it wasn't until the 1970s until they actually became a protected species. Since then, their numbers have dramatically increased and are flourishing. Saltwater crocodiles are the largest species of reptile in the world. They have the ability to grow up to 7 metres and weigh over a tonne. Females like this one here, they'll breed and lay their eggs in a nest during the wet season, and they can lay anywhere between 10 and 50 eggs. The temperature of the nest can actually determine the sex of the crocodiles. The warmer the temperature will produce more males, whereas the cooler temperatures will produce more females. One of the best ways to find crocodiles is by spotlighting them at night. We went spotlighting most nights when we were in the Northern Territory. It's great fun and by far the easiest way to cruise up to some big crocs. Sometimes we were spotting over 50 crocs a night. Unfortunately, I don't have the best footage as I was often solo on these missions and it's rather hard trying to steer a boat, film a croc and not push the boundaries where a defensive attack could occur. But here's a few clips I managed to get and I really hope you enjoy them. How cute is this little salty hunting fish that are attracted by my light? Only 1% of hatchling crocs will actually make it to adulthood. Adult crocodiles will eat most animals in their environment, but most animals in the environment will also eat juvenile crocs. Animals such as barramundi, birds of prey, monitor lizards, and even other crocodiles. Hatchling salties will hang close to their mother within the first few weeks of life, and eventually they will set off and start exploring for food on their own often eating small fish, crabs, insects, and frogs. I plan on filming another crocodile episode later on in the year, showcasing what it's like to go croc spotlighting. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thanks again for watching.